And Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show every trading day right here, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also, a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get the Steve's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see it right under Featured Content. You just hit Mastering Probability. You hit Subscribe. You can get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. You get it for a year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. So the bottom line, you come over, check it out. It works for you. Great. It doesn't work for you for some reason. You get your money back. You get everything to win and zero to lose. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, I think it's going to be rocking and rolling in Boston tomorrow night at 8.05 p.m. Actually, probably before then, but uh, uh, that's that's the uh, playoff game between the uh, Yankees and Boston. Yes. So that's, that's, that should be we – should, we, should we should get a couple tickets, Tom, and fly up on your plane up there and go catch the game. That would be a beautiful thing, <laughs> <laughs> especially would. if we could find my plane. <laughs> <laughs> I like exactly. it. I like exactly. it. Exactly. And then how about how about uh, you know Tampa going to three and one? I and, know. And you've got the Patriots at one and three. Yeah. You know? And uh, you talk about a nail biter, man. That was a trip in general. You know. Absolutely. Field yes, goal yes, city, yes. right? And then it hits the. You didn't see it, folks. It hit the goalposts at the end. I mean, I'm glad Brady won. I'm glad Tampa won. But yes. it's it was you know I guess it's in the cards. That's that's one of those that's okay, man. I guess. Has it been difficult? I mean, I have to imagine you were a Patriots fan oh, originally. Yeah, yeah so but, it, I, I, you're just a fan of both teams, uh, but you just pull more for Tampa at this stage? Yeah, or, I do. Or is, I do. It's like you can't really lose, right? You, no, either it, team it that blows wins. my mind that they blew it up there, and then he comes here, okay? Yeah. Brady's amazing. I mean, he's just a great guy, too. So it's like, you know, all in all that, yeah, I mean, you know, Give me a break, man. I'll follow Brady wherever he goes. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> well, you know, I I love Mahomes too, man. I just like oh, good players. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, the, the, I well, let's put, I like how they play. I like when there's they a, move out of the pockets, and you know what I mean. It, it's yeah, a whole a different great, ball game. Yeah, great crop of quarterbacks. Yeah. out there. Yeah. really a great crop. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, it's so, cool. We were talking about it's just like the New York crop of golfers that are coming up, man. These. Oh yes. It's just yes, yes. There's, there's just a lot of talent out here, which is really awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah, totally. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, let's take a look at the building blocks, or a couple of the building blocks of the markets here. And uh, first, just start out by trying to understand the bigger picture and what might be going on. So we're going to focus here. Give me cursor going. One of those building blocks are the TAS market profiles, and those are the uh, uh, colors that you see on the screen there. Um, so when we take a look at the TAS market profiles, they help us to identify buyers, sellers. And where both buyers and sellers believe price is fairly valued within the profile. So right up here, we can see there's a new profile that's formed. This is the uh, Dow uh, Equity Future Contract. This is for its quarterly time frame. Again, we're taking a big picture view. Uh, oh, shoot. The charts are, aren't showing. I'm sorry. My apology out there. That's Tom, okay. I started the uh, – stop this sharing here. Let's see if I can get the right screen. There we go. So now let's get the right screen. And and uh, so we'll just start we back go. here. We got yeah, it. So let's just start back here. So okay. the building blocks, folks, that I'm talking about right now are the TAS market profiles. And those TAS market profiles, they help us to identify sellers. They're at the top of the profile. On this chart here, they're at the top at this little red line. And this is a brand-new profile for the quarterly time frame. So, again, just take a look at a bigger picture here for the Dow. Both buyers and sellers reside at the center of a profile. So that's this little yellow line that I've got. And very, and at the bottom of the profile, the green line, uh, that's where buyers reside. So what's cool about this is we know that there's sellers are just sitting out at the 35, 4, 31 level. Buyers are sitting down at 22, 8, 11. I'm not saying price is going to get down there, but if it did, that's a potential buy point. And then both buyers and sellers believe with inside this range on a quarterly basis that 28,219 is where price is fairly valued within that entire range. Okay, when the center of the profile is closer to the bottom versus the top, what that does for us is that generates a bullish structured profile. And that means that uh, as long as price stays within inside this level, it, we should see price get up to the top of that profile. And if price closes, and this is the white little rectangle area that I've got yes. here, so you can see the lines, it's very clear. Now the reason that it's bullish in structure is because at that center has both buyers and sellers, but at the bottom it's just buyers out there. So there's more buyers with inside that range, and it should, and price should hold that level. Doesn't always, and when it does, it gives us an important piece of information. So uh, bullish, understanding bullish and bearish structures really help us out. In fact, 
if we take a look at uh, another another thing that is also important to look at is where do new profiles form versus the prior profile. And at this stage here, we can see that the new profile here has formed above the prior profile. Now, what I mean about that, folks, is that the bottom is above the prior bottom, the center is above the prior center, and the top is above the prior top. Now, that tells us that over the bigger picture, from a quarterly standpoint, that the uh, trend is still bullish, remains bullish. If we take a look at the 2020 decline inside the Dow Equity Future contract, what we're going to see is price came right back to the bottom of that profile, that green line that was at 17478 That was the bullish structured profile that we were just taking a look at. No, no, we were looking at the bullish structure one before that. This one, too, was bullish in structure. So, again, larger picture uh, with a new profile forming above the prior one says that uh, the, the larger trend, the bullish trend, is still in place out there. Now, our overall conclusion that the bull market is alive, and the proof of that will be a close above 35,431. That's that's where the sellers reside on a quarterly basis. So we're not there. But if price does close above that, that tells us truly, that gives us the confirmation that the bull run is going to go ahead and continue. Now, the NQ has formed a new bearish structured quarterly profile. So we've got the Dow with a bullish structured profile, the NQ with a bearish structured profile. In this case here, the center of that profile is really key. Again, buyers and sellers exist there. If we see the NQ close below 13,876, that's gonna suggest that price could push all the way down to the 9314 level. We're not there yet, but 13,878 is a real key level of support. The ES itself has not formed any new quarterly profile, so there's nothing new that I can share, Tom, with you or our listeners out here with regard to that. But the bullish trend is still in place here for the ES Mini. Again, we're talking bigger picture. If we back things up and we go to a weekly time frame, we can see the Dow Equity Future contract weekly time frame. It's slightly bearish in structure. And this is a, what's really important is not where price is trading today. This snapshot was taken several hours ago, but where the close is on Friday. We can see that last Friday's close was right on the center of that profile in that 34,189 area. But if we get a close below 34,189 on a weekly basis, this tells us that the Dow should or the YM should target the 32,327 level. From a daily standpoint, when we take a look at the uh, Dow, uh, the real key level to be watching here is 33,478. Now, on this white background chart here, Tom, I don't have my A to B equals CD tool. So what I do is just simply draw a blue line from the A point to the B point, and then just simply take that exact same line, figure out where that sure. C point is. And so that just gives me the range of where the A to B equals CD pattern or Gartley buy. And the way that those form for me and get confirmed is with a bullish reversal candle. And that was a three river morning star. So 33,478 is a real key level of support. And that's really important because we've just entered that favorable seasonal cycle. So we want to keep out an eye out for lows. We'd like to see those occur with bottoming signals in all four equity future contracts. So 4293.75 is the key level for the Dow. This is what we're looking at the daily time frame. 14.537 for the NQ, 33.478 for the YM, and 21.46 for the Russell 2000. Nice update, man. The beautiful Thanks, thing. Thanks, Listen, folks, real easy to get Steve's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. As you come over, you're going to go right into featured content, mastering probability on the right-hand side. Steve, have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow, tomorrow at 1. Thanks, Tom. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.